Magdalena Matrewska and you're watching Back at Home. In today's episode we continue discussing the music of Mozart, his famous Turkish March Sonata in A major, K331. Now what does the K stand for? For those of you who saw the previous episode, you will probably remember that a K stands for Kirchel, Ludwig von Kirchel, who was the first one to catalog the works of Mozart chronologically. Sometimes you may also see a KV, which stands for Kirchel Verzeichnis, a German word for catalog. We are not quite sure as to the date or the place of composition of this sonata. It could be either Vienna or Paris, and the year of composition is between 1778 and 83. So Mozart would be in his late 20s, early 30s writing this piece. This sonata is really quite unusual when it comes to the key structure. It is homotonal, meaning that all of the three movements are going to be written in the same key. If you remember from the previous episode, I talked about this second movement being written in a key of four. This time Mozart decides to stay in one key for the duration of the sonata. The first movement is also not the traditional sonata form that I discussed last time. It is actually written in a variation form. So let's discuss a little bit the material. You don't need to have an advanced degree in theory to be able to understand some of the ideas behind the music. Mozart marks this opening movement of this sonata as Andante Grazioso. It gives us an idea of two things, the tempo, Andante being a walking comfortable tempo, and Grazioso referring to the charm and grace in this movement. Now the rhythm of this theme what is called a Siciliana, a dance featuring a lot of that dotted rhythm. Let's listen again. Dotted. The theme is presented rather simply to groups of eight measures that are repeated and I discussed the idea of repeating sections in the last video uh, so please come back to it to find out more. As I mentioned before, this sonata is homotonal. It is written in one key throughout, and it is actually quite unusual that Mozart decides to stay in one key instead of introducing variety by modulating, by changing keys. So it is a challenge of its own. Let's take a listen. which is a compound meter. In this case, we are thinking in two, which helps us uh, keep the piece on the light side. I will demonstrate for you. One, two. One, two. set of six variations on this tune. I want to draw your attention to one detail. In the opening melody, you heard 
this half step, a very tiny motif, a portion of the melody, very close, the closest two keys on the keyboard, C sharp and D. Just listen to how Mozart goes about dealing with half steps in his first variation. is something that I discussed in a previous episode is opera and multiple characters in, in the dramatic plot that is uh, evolving here. We started in piano in a very timid manner but now things change. You may want to know about the trills in the music of Mozart. His father, Leopold Mozart, who was a famous violinist and for a long time took a, a care of the career of his young son, actually wrote a treatise on playing the violin, uh, in which you also find information on how to perform ornaments. Turns out that for the music of this era, the ornaments still are performed the same way that they were in the Baroque, and that is from the upper note. In other words, when you see a trill on the B, you will actually perform it from C sharp, which is a step above. Naturally, there will be many exceptions to this rule, but you can probably safely perform trills in the sonata from the upper note. On to variation two, in which it is the left hand that gets quite busy. And let's keep track of our half step motif here, which you will hear between my second and first finger. It adds quite a bit of spice to the texture. Let's take a listen. and retains the spicy motif of a half tone, half step. Now there is a big change in the third variation and that is the mode. We are moving from A major to A minor. And even though Mozart doesn't indicate the different character, it is the mode itself that dictates us to perform it in a perhaps more subdued manner. Just listen to the abundance of those half-step motifs. Slowing down so you can hear them. These are so called neighbor notes. Just popping by next door and coming right back. And left hand now. Further on in this variation, Mozart reinforces the right hand by adding an octave and that gives it a little bit more uh, dramatic expression. Let's take a listen. When we play these octaves on the modern piano, we have to be particularly careful about our use of pedal. It is probably best to flutter it, letting your foot go up and down very quickly on the pedal. This probably would not have been possible on Mozart's piano, which had a knee lever right underneath the keyboard and that lever would have been pressed up by the right knee.
Variation 4 returns to the sunny key of A major. In here, Mozart inserts one of his favorite tricks, and that is the arms crossing. which plays here on top makes me think of bells and that allows me to be slightly more generous with the use of the pedal than I would have been in the previous variation. I only change, I only change the pedal when the harmony changes. In the second half of this variation, I'm going to have to be much more careful about the use of the pedal because of this stepwise motion here, as well as half steps. We hadn't forgotten about them and neither has Mozart. The fifth variation introduces a new tempo, Adagio. Adagio also is an indicator of freedom, of expression. And when you play this fifth variation, it's a good idea to imagine a very lyrical, intimate aria that uh, Mozart would have written for one of his operatic characters, most likely a princess or a countess. to play this particular uh, variation with the most singing cantabile tone and a beautiful touch. Throughout this variation, the character of the right hand is extremely vocal. Just listen to the last two measures. something that one might find in a Mozart aria. I should add a detail about pedaling since we discussed it in the previous variations. Uh, here in measure 107, it would not be wise to use that much pedal because the right hand is too busy with the stepwise motion. Therefore, I recommend overholding the notes just ever so slightly, creating a so-called finger legato, no pedal. So you hear how it creates a beautiful uh, resonance without pressing the pedal. Now, variation six is very resolute, full of energy, passion and joy. Just listen to how powerful it is rhythmically and don't lose track of the half-step motifs. is considerably longer than others. Mozart is taking his time to give us a grand finale and to do so he inserts a coda, C-O-D-A, an Italian word for tale. Here is the tale of this variation. <laughs> Let's 
talk about the second movement. The most unusual thing about it is that it starts in the same key of A major. Any other second movement of a Mozart sonata would have started on the key of four, therefore probably in D major. However, here, as I mentioned before, Mozart seems to be challenging himself not to change the keys and see how many ideas he can come up with without modulation. Another very interesting thing about this second movement is that it is a dance, a minuet. Minuets were extremely popular during Mozart's time and before. You may remember the minuets of Bach, Couperin and Rameau. It was a court dance, dance in couples, very elegant and sophisticated. By the way, I only play for you small fragments of each movement so that we have more time to discuss the music itself. But I will make sure to include in the description of the video the full performances of each movement. Now in measure 19 of the second movement, Mozart can't help himself and does modulate for a moment. change the key for a moment to D major, which is the key in which the entire movement should have been written in the first place. And so on. Things get quite dramatic for a moment. too soon in order to discuss what is probably the most celebrated and the most famous piano piece by Mozart and that is his Turkish march Alla Turca. In the late 18th century the Turkish music and in fact all things Turkish became hugely popular in Europe and Mozart was certainly not the only one writing Turkish marches. His fellow composers active in Vienna around the time, you may know the term Viennese classicist, were also writing Turkish marches. Josef Haydn and Ludwig van Beethoven were among those composers. You may also have heard the term Janissary music. It was a term referring to military style Turkish music. And even the pianos, those that already had their pedals down by their feet, included an extra pedal, the Janissary stop. It would make a rattling sound similar to a tambourine. 
I was very fortunate to find one of those instruments with a Janissary stop when I was visiting Villa Bossi in Italy. Here's a short clip of what this music sounds like with that pedal. of this Turkish march is a rondo, meaning that the main melody will return over and over, round and round, hence the Italian word rondo. That's the main melody material A. Mozart introduces moments of light and shadow. Just listen to this modulation here to C major. Very quick departure. Immediately answered back in the key of A minor. important to keep in mind and really quite amazing to think about is the fact that for every piece that Mozart wrote there were probably hundreds of pieces by composers whose music never stood the test of time. Mozart's music even though it feels so natural is really beautifully crafted and quite unusual and so is the form of this rondo. A regular rondo would go something like A, B, A, C, A. However, in this case, Mozart really mixes up uh, the different elements and it makes the form slightly more complicated. However, this allows us to enjoy what is sometimes called a refrain. <laughs> Mozart actually proceeds to the material which we could call B. Brief modulation followed by A major. actually be repeated. Now what follows is finally our main melody. So we're back to material A. And what follows is our refrain. This time, however, as opposed to blocked octaves, it will be presented in broken octaves. and jubilation and to give us the feeling of a truly grand finale Mozart writes a coda <laughs> strong ending, Mozart inserts a music box-like moment here in piano featuring Alberti bass. Thank you so much, as always, for joining me today. It has been a pleasure sharing this wonderful music with you, and more Mozart will be coming soon. 
As always, I invite you to join me here on this channel where you will find many more videos on the Back at Home playlist. For now, take care and stay well.